Um, the title of the presentation indicates somewhat how I found this translator um, whose work is the main subject today. Um, she's a first activist and um, is involved with feminist groups in my home country and is well known as she is also a spokeswoman of the feminist struggle there. Uh, when I found out that she was working as a translator in the literary arena and that she has a great reputation as book editor, she became a logical choice for my research work. The information I will present is part of what I have gathered from my doctoral thesis, which intends to um, elucidate the status of feminist translation in Mexico in educational research context and in practice. So the focus today is um, on this aspect. In order to determine whether or not there are feminist approaches to translation in Mexico, some interviews are on the way. Um, the participants are mostly literary translators, um, but they may also be working with more pragmatic texts like legal or medical to give a few examples. I have to say though that I originally wanted to focus only on literary work because it was the breeding ground um, of feminist translation, but translators tend to be versatile and work in different areas, at least the feminist ones. The reality is true as well for the feminist, uh, the, the activist feminists interviewed. One of the questions I want to answer um, in my analysis of the situation is the following. How is feminist translation um, experienced by women translators who identify as feminists? How do they handle text? Do they resort to feminist strategies for social activism or political action? What is their opinion in regard to inclusive language politics or to their relation, um, relationship with publishers? Here um, are some examples of the questions included in the semi-structured questionnaire I'm currently using for data collection. I will be selecting a few to present some interesting answers. These are examples of feminist practices that will come up in the analysis of the answers to my, uh, the answers that um, this person provided to my questions. These practices are procedures for translating feminist texts or implementing feminist ideology in translation. And as we all know, were heavily criticized in early theoretical discussions by external critics mostly. They could also be other forms um, uh, of feminist collaboration among women. Uh, in general, they are mostly used in a way to raise some patriarchal linguistic eyebrows in the name of cultural change. Women handling is a term coined by Barbara Goddard for the manipulation of texts, something similar to what Louis von Plotow called hijacking for open interventions to make the feminine more apparent, for example. Prefacing and footnoting are reflections or explanations given by the translators with reference to some of the challenges they encountered in the original and how they women handle them. Resistancy is an author-centered strategy according to Masa Diakeni, and it is a translation that challenges norms or, conven or conventions in literary or linguistic terms. Close collaboration concerns working closely with one or more translators and or with the author of the text. The criticism or paratranslations is proposed as a strategy for analysis by Olga Castro, and it focuses on those elements that go along with the main text um, like the title, preface, notes, advertising, cover of the book, and, or other graphic aspects. All this is important as it affects the perception of the literary work in the target language. Um, there are more practices or techniques, of course, but they were not brought up in the conversation with our feminist activists. As for her profile, um, our translator does not have any training as a translator or interpreter. Um, it was and it was not until recently that she started studying a diploma program to become a more professional interpreter, as she said. Her literary translation work has been centered on fiction, fantasy novels, and mystery mostly, and nonfiction books as well, um, of philosophy, feminism, economics, anthropology, sociology as the most common topics. Her texts, either as a writer or a translator, include a more academic writing style. Now, does she reflect her activism in the text she works on as a translator? We will find out. But as it happens, she has worked additionally as an editor. And it will be interesting uh, to see if her background on the handling of text as an editor is combined with her skills as translator and a feminist.
So to start um, sharing her answers, let's start with her approach for translating, as she reported. Her guiding principle for translating is to create translations that read well. Uh, she believes that sometimes translations into Spanish do not read well because translators follow the original structure excessively and are too distracted by trying to include all the details of the original text rather than focusing on making easy the, or to grasp the original meaning. She translates for the readers. She, uh, so she avoids literal translation when possible, but keeps in mind that she's just the means to deliver other people's ideas. The translator is never free in her assignments, according to her, because the translator is tied to the original text. And also the contract specifies it has to be faithful to the original. She does not agree sometimes with um, what others write, but she cannot do anything about it, she insists. And um, she actually provided um, an example um, about the male writer, writer sorry, using the word sex worker, which she does not use and uh, reject as a feminist and abolitionist of prostitution. But she believes also that fidelity to the original is top priority. Um, do you consider her approach to be, uh, to be feminist at this point? Well, um, she doesn't seem to women handle text at all, apparently. Um, she's not that much of an activist in her translation work. As she says, she still needs to pay rent and buy food. As an editor though, uh, she did mention she once had the power to select winners of a literary contest for teenagers. She changed a book that had a violent story and was supposed to have a special mention in the context, but she then later selected um, a more feminine work. Uh, for more feminine book instead. As for examples of resistance, well, we know that in English, some words are not gender specific or neutral gender is used more naturally, but in Spanish, it needs to be determined and people tend to use generic masculine all the time. She used feminine to some indefinite gender words um, in a philosophy book and was completely rejected by the proofreader. But she asserts that the writer was already using examples for female and male um, readers al alternately, but she, she, um, she did not win that fight. On another, on another note, she once translated a book which dealt with child molestation and generic masculine was changed um, to generic feminine due to the fact that molested children, around 90%, are mainly female. The editor and proofreader change all to generic um, masculine and ask for approval from the author. She was furious, of course, <laughs> that such changes were done to her work and she couldn't believe, believe a book that uh, was written with gender perspective would, would have such approach in Spanish. In the back cover of the same book, they had a comment from Harriet Lerner, a very uh, famous psychologist, and she was really shocked that they used the word author in masculine in Spanish. Um, and she believes that it was unfortunate uh, that they misgender her as it was evident she was a woman. And of course she identifies as a woman. She also highlighted the fact that they used many little flowers for the cover of that same book, but at the same time were using masculine gender for the main title. So she thinks the publishers knew who the book was intended for, but did not acknowledge it with the, uh, with the use of language. Close collaboration is practically non-existent um, in her work, as she only has exchanged a few mails with a few authors. She additionally believes that she shouldn't be correcting authors' mistakes uh, or bother the author unnecessarily. She hasn't written any four words you know, reflecting on her translation work, um, but have used footnotes, although she hates them. And, and, and I quote, if you want your translation to read well, the translator has to be invisible, not distracting. And well, we as translators, we have heard that a lot. Translator's notes are unnecessary now, she thinks, um, because now we have access, easy access to the internet and you can, you don't, uh, there is no need for explanations. She has no objection to the use of inclusive language. 
uh, which is very popular among feminists in Latin America. And she merely focuses on the transfer of the corresponding non-sexist strategies. However, when she has a choice, um, she avoids it and only splits gender into masculine and feminine when there is a plural or neutral term. She chooses to use correct Spanish instead, she said, instead of inclusive language, as she thinks the feminist struggle is bigger than the use of language. So we should be focused on what is relevant instead. When dealing with problematic or offensive texts, she believes that her guiding principle still applies and the translation should be as faithful to the original as possible. So that the effect is not changed and the text can be exhibited as it is in the original. About the perception publishers may have about feminist translation, she says that they will not allow blatant linguistic activism in the text, at least in Mexico. Translators will have to negotiate too much to get away with it. Of course, that's her opinion as an editor as well. About her activist side, she basically um, does interpreting work and collaborates for free for the advocacy group named uh, Women's Declaration International. Every Saturday, women get together on Zoom to discuss the ways in which feminism is needed in their own countries and English is the vehicular language. Her participation is as an English Spanish interpreter. Her motivation was originally to improve her interpreting skills as she confessed, but later felt that helping other women to understand and learn about feminism was very rewarding. She does not do translation as an activist because that generally, generally takes more time and prefers interpreting because it's fast and does not, does not require too much from her. She's currently having some talks um, with a publisher for the translation of a very popular feminist book by Helen Joyce. This is interesting because she hasn't uh, translated many feminist books uh, before. She, uh, she said that she has only translated two or three books that are um, feminist. Now, um, she's so excited about this possibility for um, the translation of this, uh, the book that I just mentioned. Um, because it is a profitable book and she says that um, not many opportunities uh, like this one come very often. That is why she believes that some other classical feminist books will never be translated because at least in Mexico because they are not commercial and the proprietary rights may be expensive and publishing houses do not trust they will recover such investment. For cases like those she advocates for the circulation of PDF books uh, with the translation of feminists whose interest is the dissemination of feminist thinking. To conclude, in order to, um, well, it seems that activism is reserved to free work outside. Our translator reported being cautious about the manipulation of text and tried to be faithful to original and invisible in the target text. Her activism was more on social action uh, and not related to text changes. Um, struggles in the literary work do not always reflect a feminist fight, as I just mentioned. This is interesting as um, the interviewee is well known as a staunch supporter of feminism in Mexico. The comparison with other interviewed subjects will surely help determine if this is just a case of a translator whose editor's site is stronger in influence or maybe feminist practices are practically impossible for professional translators there, or they could only be developed and promoted at scholarly level, as I have um, noticed in some um, conference presentations there, that people have very interesting uh, suggestions for uh, implementation of feminist uh, strategies or techniques, but we will have to see if that is possible in real life, right? In relation to this, we need to be attentive to the ways in which uh, fem new feminist translators are exploring the field and to the strategies they resort to. Maybe, like our translator interpreter in the study, the fight is not on the manipulation of text or changes in the text, but in other social acts. Can translators actually have agency in their work? Some people like uh, Bon Floto and Lovinier Harwood have asserted that there must be a proper, proper cultural context 
to allow such freedom when working as feminist translators. And this is important as one of the criticisms often heard is that most of the strategies utilized by feminist translators will not be approved in more traditional contests. I can only hope that the complementary and following steps for this research will allow me to shed more light about the possible reasons for the situation reported. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>